I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. Welcome to YouTube Live. We talk about all things plumbing here. Now, if you are actually here in the live stream, so glad to have you here. If you found this video accidentally on my channel and this is what, what was recommended to you, you may want to hang around. We go live every Monday afternoon from 3 to 5.30 Central Standard Time, and we talk all things plumbing. So here, here's going to be some great questions, some great answers. Not just me. I get a lot of great plumbers that get in here and give their feedback. Not just plumbers, all kinds of tradesmen from all around the world. Neat thing about it is hang out in here. You may find something interesting, entertaining, fun, knowledgeable, and whatnot. We have people that want to get in the trades, people that want to become better tradesmen. People that are thinking about opening up their own company and trades company owners that want to learn to use social media to grow their business. If this is not what you're looking for, you're just looking for a, a direct answer to plumbing, jump over in the YouTube channel and search for what you're looking for. And if you have not done it yet, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. That way you're notified every time we go live and every time we put out a new video. Everything looking okay there? Perfect. Okay, so well, that wasn't good. There we go. As you can see, we are constantly tweaking things around. Uh, how's everybody doing today? This is Monday. I'm going to jump in the comments here real quick, but I want to tell you, those of y'all that don't know, if you haven't done so yet, go up to the top. If you've got a question, go up to the top. There's a link to the form. Go over into the form and ask your question there. I normally don't answer questions out of the chat. I'll bounce back in there every now and then to say hi to people and stuff. But normally, man, here's the deal. If you've got a question that you want answered, click on the link above, go into the form, fill it out. It doesn't take but just a second. It asks for your email address, your first and last name. Then it asks, are you currently in the trades? And then it asks for your question and it says, please keep it short. Uh, I've had people write down three pages of questions. So here's what I want to tell you. If y'all hadn't done yet, have you subscribed? If not, why not? Just curious. I always ask. But my thing is, man, we're trying to bring y'all great information. And we've already got somebody in here from North Wales. Welcome to the YouTube channel. I'm going to scroll back up in here and just kind of jump through the chat real quick so I can say hello and see how everybody is doing. We have Hamza, man, I know I'm going to mess this up. Started with a tough one. Hamza Abdel, Abdelal, how are you doing? C squared. Miss Amber Mendoza 11 is in the house. Good to see you. Miss Liz, hey, I'm even in here. Man, this is kind of crazy. All my Gary up and well, Uppel, Uppel Dachek. Boy, I, I know I got that wrong. Uppel. Doc talk, up a doc talk. I love your videos, man. I love that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Nice intro. Fantastic. Mr. Virgil Hatfield in the house and in the studio. I love that. Smart Gorilla is in here. And I guess we're still having a problem. Oh, no. You're right in front of camera one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh, you know, as you see, we have fun in the studio. So we're trying to do things right. So normally we try to take care of this a little bit beforehand, uh, but it looks like we can make this work. Got Smart Gorilla in here. How are we doing? Uh, Steve Harloa, all the way from Hawaii. Got to love that. Uh, I've actually got a friend coming in from Kona today. I actually got a test, text message earlier. He is the creator of Meter Dog, back here, back, here, back here behind me, right there over my shoulder. He's the creator of Meter Dog. He's coming into town. Uh, man, I'm looking forward to this product. I've got one on at my house. I love it. We've done some really cool stuff with it. So it's going to be interesting to see how this goes. So Scotty Bim, Folab41, how are you? AMD, please fix my card. Blake Drury in the house. Blake, how are you? Good to see you in here. Aloha. I know. And, and you know what? That's what he says. Every time you call him, Steve, every time he gets off the phone, it's always aloha. Love that. Guys, remember, if you want to ask a question, if you want to 
ask a very specific question about how to get into the trades, how to get better at the trades, how to start your own company, or even how to learn to use social media to grow your business, please let me know. Uh, click up in the form, go over and ask it. I will get to those and answer all of them. So please, if you got questions, jump on over there. I love this architectural sheet metals in the house. How we doing? Good to see you. Uh, the screen's black. It, it did. It went black because I hit a wrong button. So sorry about that. Mighty Max, hello. And, and I love this because I, I get I get told this a lot. It, it's your boy so, says Doctor Phil about to lay down the law. Now we are going to talk plumbing today. That is for sure. Mop bucket, Scotty Bim. X Chara, we got a lot of folks in here. I kind of like this. Spicy 207, good afternoon to you. James Games, what's up, brother? What kind of games do you do, James? Mighty Max says hello. Well, this is an easy one. Ernesto Davia says, good afternoon. How do you relight the pilot light of a water heater? The biggest things most people mess up on is you've got to turn it off and leave it off for about five or 10 minutes. Before you turn it back on, that gives the chamber time to clear out. Beat the devil out of it. What's up? Good to see you in here again. Scotty Mem says, dang, ring the bell, people. That's what it's there for. Subscribe and ring the bell. That way you know what's going on. It helps. And hello to you. How are you doing? Good to see you in here. Oh, never mind. He got it. And the directions are always on there, so it does help. And Matt Sparrow says, What's up, bud? Glad to catch you live. I'm glad you caught me live. We actually have fun in here. I got to tell you, this is one of the coolest things I do every week. And, and it's a great way for me to start out my week. That's why we do it on Monday. Look, man, there, there's no better way to start your week than to help people. And I love the fact that we get to talk about plumbing. We get to talk all things plumbing. So it really is pretty cool. And one thing I'm going to put up here, and, and this is just a banner. Let me make sure I find the right one. Uh, I don't know why I always have, have a hard time finding this. There we go. If y'all have not joined my subreddit yet, just check it out. The only reason that I say that is that is where we get some of our best videos and pictures and stuff like that for our YouTube videos. And I know we got one of those coming up, but I'm over on subreddit right there on TikTok right there. If you're not connected with me on Twitter, and Instagram, and Facebook, and LinkedIn. Man, Grayson has been busy. But let's keep it right here. Let's check out the subreddit. So I'm going to jump back into the chat real quick. And let me scroll back up here and find out where the one I was. Man, you got to love these modern technologies and toys. Oh, that's why. Hello. So uh, I do love that. I love you, Dr. Phil. You know, I have fun doing this. I got to tell y'all guys, it is pretty cool. Jesse Mendez says, hello, Roger Wakefield. Jesse, how are you? Good to see you in here. Uh, and see, th th this is one of the coolest comments that I get, and I get this one off. I literally just fixed my toilet. Thanks to you. Thank you so much. Victor Ramos, thank you. I appreciate you. And at least jumping in here and saying it. Man, I think I muted that just in time. That was good. Actually, it was the wrong mic. Sorry about that. Oh, well. Glad that I could help. There we go. This is what it's about. Joe Everest subscribed. If y'all have not checked out Joe Everest, Joe is, man, one of the coolest fence builders I've ever met. Matt, he is the fence guy. He teaches people how to build fences the right way, the wrong way, the good way, the bad way. And he goes live with his sister a lot, which is actually pretty cool. And he brings other people in. So I got to tell you, it's really pretty cool getting over there, watching and, and seeing what all's going on. <clears throat> Billy Bob, how are you doing? Michael Vaughn Winter, winter's coming. No, brother, winter is here. Uh, Billy Bob is subbed. I love it. Flores fam, what's going on? Good to have you in the house. And William Thomas, great seeing you in here. Yo, if y'all are in here, everybody do me a favor real quick and put in the comments where you're from, 
and what you do. If you're an apprentice, if you're a journeyman plumber, a master plumber, a company owner, or even, even if you're not, if you're not in the trades, just put, you know what, I'm a fence builder, uh, I'm a carpenter, whatever it is, do me a favor, just put it in there and say hello and let me know what's up. Jace Murphy, good to see you in here. I like this. Don't see my art. Hello from India. Good to have you in here. So when we did our, our video about plumbing in India versus plumbing here, what did you think about that? Just curious. And Matthew Villancourt Dion says, hey, hope you're doing great. Cheers from Quebec. Hello to the great white north. And, and I don't guess it's white right now. It's probably not that cold, is it? We got Marcus Strangle in here. Good to have you. Cody Grammer. And I love this right here. Victor Ramos, hello from California. Good to have you in here. And let me, here we go. Brad Robert, hello from New York. Long way from here, but man, that is good to see. I like this one here too. Below 36, honey. What's up from Fresno, California, local 246. Good to have you in the house. So I, I want to say this one more time, guys. Look, if you've got questions or comments, and my 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 my, my Lometric thing is messing up on me, guys. I may have to unplug it and reset it and just see what it does. Uh, what we had a problem with the internet earlier today. It, it happens. We have to unplug it sometimes. But it, it's good seeing everybody in here. Yeah, Steve Arlo is back actually on time. Uh Abigail, man, I've got I've got four people in my marketing department. I'm always looking for people to add to the marketing team. I've got really I've got I've got three video editors. I've got one social media strategist. Uh, I've got a senior editor that is fantastic, and life is wonderful. Johnny Johnny Arsenault, how are you doing from Montreal? Got man, Canada is well represented today. Billy Bob's in here and. Moderator numero uno, the Urban Explorer, and the Urban S Explorer is probably sitting there with him. Uh, guys, watching him and his YouTube channel, if you have not seen the Urban Explorer YouTube channel, you need to go check it out and subscribe. He does some crazy stuff with vans. It's really neat to watch him rebuild them and travel around the country and have fun in them. So it's pretty cool. Uh, Team is all good. Uh, now, I like this. Michael Vaughn says, just passed my second year in college doing plumbing. Good for you. Keith Rayburn, how are we doing today? Hey, I like that name, though. That's good. Michael Potter. They found it real interesting. I like that. Michael says, had your show up on my widescreen while the plumbers were replacing my AC unit? Uh, they found it really interesting. That's pretty cool. Thank you. That's why I tell people, look, and, and this is something too. If you've never done this before, and this is kind of fun, take a selfie of you in your picture where you can see the monitor and, and, and make me full screen. That way you can see it. Share it on your social media and tag me there, meaning at Roger Wakefield or at underscore Roger Wakefield, depending on where you're at. You know, do that and just say, hey, look, I'm, I'm, listening to plumbing today or learning how to fix plumbing at my house or, or whatever you want to say. But here's the cool thing about that, man. We will see that. If you'll tag me, I'll see it. I'll go in and comment on it. And I might even be able to get lists to share it on our social media. So guys, do me a favor, help a brother out. Let people know what you're doing today, why you're doing it. Because if you're sharing this and, and tagging and stuff like that, look, man, YouTube shares the love. They say, hey, look, Roger, you're doing good things. That's what it's all about. So Michael Potter, I love the fact that you had, you showed it to plumbers or they saw it and thought it was a pretty cool deal. All right. So I am going to, uh, I, I like this. Uh, we have a Christopher Wakefield in the house. Uh, good to have you in here. And I don't think we're related, but hello. And MM. Molinsek says, what's your weekly schedule and how is your day? My schedule is crazy. And, and, it, and it always is because I run 90 miles an hour seven days a week. And, and 
what I mean by that is, look, I was up here yesterday working on YouTube. I was working on the marketing. I was up here yesterday working on content. I do that every day. I came in this morning and I, I started with the team meeting. We had a quick huddle, talked to the marketing team for a little bit. I had a meeting with my sponsor, Ferguson. So met with them for an hour. That was wonderful. And I got to tell you, I love the back and forth, the, the mastermind, talking, communicating, thought it was great. Stuff like that is just really, really cool. So thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm going to jump over into the chat, or I'm sorry, I'm in the chat now. I'm going to jump over into the forum real quick and start answering some questions there. If y'all have got questions you really want answered, do me a favor, jump over into the forum. It doesn't take but a second. Really, I think there's two or three questions. Uh, the only one you'll have a hard time is, is what's your name? Uh, please put your name, not mine. Uh, I'm joking. The, the good thing is, go over to the forum. It'll ask for your email, your name, and it'll ask, are you currently in the trades? And, and let me know if you are. And, you know, par part of your name, maybe put a space and put where you're from. Uh, that way I can shout, give you a shout out. So this is a really good one because this is the first question in the form. I'm going to scroll down there. It says, and this is from Mason Molensek. How are you doing? And Mason is not in the trades. He's still in school. Or I say he. I knew a girl named Mason once. So just in case. What are all the different types of pipes you use? And this is really good because I'm in Texas. So we use PVC, not ABS. Although I have had a couple of jobs, and, and as you see the the low metric thing, look at it right there. It, it's working right now. Two hundred ninety eight thousand subs, uh, and then it goes zero. I can't figure it out. Anyway, uh, we use PVC, not ABS. We use a lot of copper. Although we do PEX A, PEX B, Upanor. I love Upanor. I think it's phenomenal. When we're doing copper, we solder most of the time, but I use Viega PEX, I use Nipco or, or PEX, Viega Press, Apollo Press, uh, Nipco Press. I'll tell you what, we did a great video on Nipco Press the other day. They've got a cool tool. Uh, I, and I got to tell you, I just, I really did enjoy it. It's actually fun. So mainly it's cast iron, copper, PVC. That's probably the majority of it, but we do get into PEX and Upanor too. So we get to have fun and do a little bit of all of it. Blake Drury says, my drains smell when I turn my clothes washer on. Any ideas why? You know, there could be a breakage under there. There could be some kind of funky stuff down in there. It may be a good idea to get a hydro jetter and clean them out. There's a lot of different things that can happen or, or that you can do. So it, it may be something you want to try. Anytime your drains smell, I mean, they should never smell to where you get an odor out of it. If you do, that's normally a sign or something wrong. Good question, Blake. Troy Hallman says, I have my best week yet, sold $12,000 in work last week. And I got to tell you, it, it, as a plumber, that, look, that's a fantastic week. And, and he, do, he says he's in plumbing. So, you know, what I got to tell you is, we, we look, we're all in business, okay? And I say we're all in business. If you're in this trade, you're in business to make money. So what we look at is what are our plumbers' daily sales? And if you're not monitoring them and keeping up with them, it's probably not that important to you. But if you want to grow and make money, you've got to keep track of your KPIs, your key performance indicators. So we want to know how much are our plumbers selling each day? How many jobs are they going to? Are they closing those jobs? What's our average ticket item? There's a lot of different things. So, so Troy, what I'll tell you is number one, congratulations to you. That that is a great week because we we try to hit our plumbers at eighteen hundred a day. So you look at that five days. That's nine thousand a week. That that's a that's a good year for a plumber. <clears throat> Meaning that's a good revenue truck. Now. I know plumbers that do a million a year. I know plumbers that do a million five a year. So when you look at it like that, I mean, at 
$12,000 in a week, that's $600,000 a year. That's a good year. When you start looking at everything, watching at everything, learning everything, and you, you'll constantly get better. So, Troy, that is phenomenal. Congratulations to you. I think that is cool. Troy, where are you located? If you'll put it in the chat, I'll get down to it here in a little bit. Uh, Nicholas Armstrong is a laborer. Says, Roger, I have a fridge with poly water lines. It spent a year exposed to daylight through a window. Will this cause it to leak chemicals into the water? You know, I'd be more worried about the UV rays and what it could do to the water line, make it brittle, maybe make it leak. If it's if it's got compression connections on each end, it may be something you want to think about changing. I would think about it. If it goes into the refrigerator and it's one that you can't get to and change, you may want to leave it on there, but you may want to cover it with like duct tape, cover it with something that the UV won't penetrate. So. Man, good question. I like that. I mean, that is thinking way ahead. Next question in the forum. Sean Charles says, is in, still in school. Says, going into the 11th grade, there is AWS welding class for two semesters. Is welding a good career? Absolutely. Here's a great thing is, and, and those of y'all that know me know I've done residential, I've done commercial, I've done service, I've done new construction. I've been union, I've been non-union. <clears throat> AWS welding is great because it will teach you great basic skills to really get going in the trade. And what I will tell you is if you ever want to get into the union, and I'm talking about the United Association, Plumbers and Pipe Fitters, I would even check with PHCC because... They've got a lot of big contractors that do a lot of things in the union or not do a lot of things in union, do a lot of things on commercial jobs. So they need welders too. And I've heard it put a long time ago, whoever controls the welders controls the work. So whoever's got the best welders is normally going to get the best jobs because they can do things on a regular basis and, and they can do it better and they can do it faster. So here's my next thing though. Sean, to me, welding can be one of those jobs where, where literally you're just sitting there all day and you're, you're burning rod. Now, you can move up from a welder. I know some welders that are great superintendents, great project managers. You may want to look at the idea of if you ever want to open your own company, and, and don't get me wrong, an AW, AWS welding cert is a good deal. You may decide one day you want to own your own company and, and welding companies are just kind of hard to open up unless you just want to do local residential scrap welding, stuff like that, or building trailers. But I got to tell you, look, I love the fact of a welder becoming a plumber because if you can weld and learn pipe fitting and plumbing, man, you are an asset no matter what company you're working for. So great question. Jake Yato says, do I play Roblox? No, actually, I don't even know what it is. So sorry about that. I'm hoping that's a video game. Philip Banks, how are we doing? Philip is a plumber or in plumbing. Hello, Roger. Thanks for all your help. What is the best brand of pliers and wrenches for plumbing and what sizes? Man, you know, you want to talk about the best and sometimes that's hard because Number one, I can tell you, I've, I've never tried all of them. I, I, I've talked to Nipex and I think it's Wipro or Wipro uh, that are supposed to be really good. I love, I've got, gosh, I've got Raptor that's made by Ferguson. I've got DeWalt. I've got Channel Lock. I've got, I think I've even got some Milwaukee. Uh, man, Rigid. I mean, anytime, here, here's a thing to remember. <clears throat> anytime there's a name by, name behind it that you recognize, Rigid, Milwaukee, DeWalt, uh, Klein, Raptor, anytime there's a name there that you recognize and there's a warranty behind it, chances are you're going to get something good. So that's pretty neat. What sizes? 
I, I like having almost every size. I mean, I've got a pair of channel locks that are about this big. I've also got a crescent that's about this big, and I probably use each one of them just as much. So having a broad assortment is a great thing, and it can really help you. I hope that helps out, Philip. Mike H says, what is the process for having a leaky pipe in the foundation of a house? Does it have to be dug up or is there other options? Again, this is a great question and it's a really good one for me because at Texas Green Plumbing, which is the name of my plumbing company, we specialize in slab leaks and leak detection. So this is something we train in, we teach in, and we have the best equipment. So the process for having a leak, once you know you've got a leak, you start off doing, a, I'm going to call it a hydrostatic test. We do a water sewer test. We want to put a gauge on the water line. We want to fill the sewer, and then we want to test them both and see if they hold water. Once we determine that there is a leak, then we want to get in and locate it. And that's having the right electron, electronic equipment. If there's a valve at the house where you can isolate the yard from the house, that's step number one. And, and the reason being is that, Mike, you don't want me spending a lot of time looking for a leak in your house if it's really out in your yard. And on the other hand, you don't want me spending a lot of time looking out in the yard if it's up under the house. So you really need that isolation valve or a valve box right in front of your house. That way you can isolate the yard service from the house service. It's going to be a cheaper repair for the yard service because hopefully you're not having to tunnel up under the house. So then once you figure out where the leak is, then you figure out how to fix it. And you, your next part says, does it have to be dug up or is there other options? It's got to be dug up if it's under the house. It's either got to be tunneled under to, got, to be gotten to, or you've got to make a hole in the floor once you can locate it and figure out exactly where it is. So you've got options to go both ways. If it's out in the yard, if you've got the right electronic equipment and you can do a, a locate, once you can find it, you can do a spot repair. So lots of great options. Next question is from Kevin Richter. Not sure what trade I'm in. I get it. Can you best describe the feeling of walking? Can you best describe the feeling of walking as a mustache God among mortals? You know, guys, and it's funny because I get comments about my mustache in every video we do, I think. Uh, I love it. I, I love the, the fact that it's something that's distinguishable about me. Uh, I do take good care of it. I, I trim it this morning. Uh, I cut my hair every Monday morning just to get ready for you guys. And, you know, I have fun when, when people make fun of me about it because it, it is, it's kind of funny, but it, it's really neat because I have the mask. I'm, I'm sure that most of y'all have seen it over in my, my merch. You know, I've got the mask, and it's funny because whenever I go out in public, I wear it, and if if you look at it just right, you get it where it goes. Want to move my mouth? It it moves on here too, so it's actually pretty funny. But we've had fun. We've had fun with the mustache. We use it on the tuber turds, uh, the stickers that we've got, the cups that we've got, all kinds of different things. So yes, we've definitely had fun with it. I want to say thank you for the super chat to Castles Keep. How are you doing? It says the welder on my job keeps having leaks on his flanges. Calls me to fix them. How do you make up any? How do you make up any flange? Pop quiz, hot shot. Here, here's the thing, and let me ask you this, Castles Keep: Is he having a leak on the weld or on the gasket, the face of the flange? Uh, and you. you don't leave another super chat. Just jump in there and leave a question. I'll get down to it in a minute. But, and, and let me see where that is. I want to move that over here. And I say I do. I got to find it first. There we go. Put that down there. Uh, do me a favor and, and go down in there and, and leave a comment. And I had to jump way down. So I'm going to lose, I'm going to send hello to a whole lot of people right now. Uh, but, you know, here, here's my thing is, 
is it a leak on the weld or the flange, the flange connection? And the reason I ask is I worked for a, a large mechanical contractor here in the Dallas area. And we had a welder that I kid you not had welded a cap on a piece of pipe and he had about 20 freaking leaks and it blew my mind. Uh, the reason being, I normally don't have a lot of leaks on my water. Uh, so, so to have that, it, it was kind of crazy. Eric Finley has a question. I'd like to start learning to braze with acetylene and oxygen. What's your recommendation and what's needed to get started tool and tank wise? Is there a good kit to buy that you know of? You know, one thing I tell you, Eric, is, is start with a small kit. And I really wish I had one because then it's portable. You can carry them up under houses. You can carry them around with you. There's a lot of things you can do with them, but it's nice to have a portable kit like that. So, man, to me, I would say that would be a great thing. And, and I really think, yeah, there you go. Oh, wrong one. Here we go. Uh, gasket. I doped the bolts for the full. You know, and, and and I normally don't dope the bolts. I normally put anti-seize on them. But, you know, some, man, look, some welders and fitters don't get it and don't understand. Uh, it's really kind of funny. I see we have Mr. Sean Strong in the house. Good to see you, brother. Uh, try to scroll back up here. Actually, I'll leave that up there for a minute. <clears throat> so anyway, Eric, back to you. I like the idea of having the small oxygen acetylene rig to learn to braze with. I braze with a turbo torch. I do have, I've got a big oxygen acetylene rig and I've actually carried it out to a job. That way I could, I mean, I could get all the heat that I needed. And I'll tell you what, sometimes they come in handy, but that's why I say it's really nice to have that little portable rig. And, and that's, a, that's an investment worth making. Christopher Wakefield says, how to deal with a faulty disposal, disposal unit. Man, it really depends if it's just jammed or clogged. You can either take an Allen wrench in the bottom or a, like a, I tell people a broom handle or a, a plunger inside of it to unjam it. If it keeps resetting or something and you've got to <laughs> basically end up replacing it because the electronics in it are bad, it can happen. There's there's a million different things you can have to do. Uh, the, the, the big thing is to always, if it's a faulty disposal and it's for a customer, think about changing it for them. Think about upgrading it to a better unit. And it's really funny because I did this video just the other day. Uh, I've actually got a an in-sync aerator. Uh, got a, we did the Pro 750 the other day. And I got to tell you, the first time I installed one of those was for my father. And it wasn't the 750, it was either the 880 or the 1100. And first time I put it in, I was like, wow, this thing is fantastic. And, and it really is. It's quiet. It works good. It has an auto reverse on it. So I don't know what kind of faulty disposal you've got. But what I will tell you is constantly look at, and this is a good thing for all plumbers in here. <clears throat> Always look at what is the ability to upgrade them to a better product and and to me that's a big deal and, it, and it's not just upgrading them for that reason <clears throat> a little a little bitty disposal like you know we put in the apartments i used to tell people when i first moved into my house i think my garbage disposal was about that big around and i laughed because because i i'd bought a, a a pretty nice home and i and i laughed because i thought i wonder how long this will last it lasted about five years now, I think I've got the 880 in my house. <sighs> Sorry, guys. I need some, something wet and cold and caffeinated. So how many of y'all drink this unsweet tea? I love this stuff. All right. Next question in the forum. Danny Garcia's still in school it says plumbing companies always ask for at least one year of plumbing experience how do i gain plumbing experience <clears throat> you know i'll tell you what and and there's some different mindsets to this but but my thought is learn to work on plumbing around your house 
And, and I want you to think about this because if you if you still live at home, number one, I, I know I've got videos teaching people how to fix all kinds of things, plumbing. Talk to your parents. Say, hey, look, I want to learn how to install a new toilet. If you'll go buy one, I'll install it. Here's what I need. You know, I need a wax ring. I need new toilet bolts. I need this. I need that. Learn to change out a faucet. Start with like a lavatory. They're normally the easiest. Then go to the kitchen. Maybe learn how to change out a frost proof. And, and most of these things we've got videos on. The ones that we don't have videos on, I've, I've got a guy making me some trainers right now. They're actually supposed to be here today, Amber. Uh, so I can do better videos. So try that. Also, you know, maybe talk to them and say, 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 look, give me, give me three months. Just let me get started and let me show you. But then when you show up, you show up early every day. You'll be the hardest worker they got. And you make them look at you like, okay, I, I cannot get rid of this guy. He, he works harder than anybody else. He has a great mindset, a great attitude. Danny, there's a lot of different ideas out there. And I'm working on some things I'll tell you all more about in the next couple of weeks. But hopefully it'll... Uh, It'll all, it'll all happen good. Uh, Castles Keep says, says got to go be a husband. They need to, ooh, oh, it disappeared. Let me scroll down in, in here. Find it before you get out of here. Oh, I guess it did disappear. Got to go be a husband. Uh, they need to make a hard hat for that gig. Yeah, keep it up. Love your channel. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate you jumping in here, Castles Keep. Good to see you, and thank you for the super chats. I, I really do appreciate it. And yeah, a hard hat for fathers would be a great thing. So, Danny, I hope that that helps you. Uh, but one thing that we're working on is um, some stuff that I think will help people like you that want to learn more. And I'll, I'll talk more about it in the next couple of weeks. Abdul A says, have you ever been to Ohio? You know, I almost said no, but I have. They actually built a Fidelity Investments up there, I believe. And they hung these units called trucks that hang in the ceiling. They they literally take warm air from the room. When it when heat rises, it goes through this cold coil and comes back down. It's actually pretty cool. Thoroughly enjoyed it, uh, getting to fly out there. I stayed in either Cleveland or Cincinnati, so it was around that area. Uh, so I have been there. And and really, man, like I said, throwing out of my hotel room, I think it was I could look over and see downtown Cincinnati and just thought that was one of the neatest things. <clears throat> uh, got a private question. Have you ever had a problem that you can't repair? You know, I think that we all run into problems every now and then that either we can't repair or, or we just don't know how. But here's what's really cool. The neat thing about it is nowadays with the internet, we, we, we have all the answers in the world right here. <clears throat> and, and I'm not saying that I have all the answers or anything like that, but manufacturers have videos to teach you what to do. Wow. So, sorry, you're bored. Oh, well, have fun. Uh, anyway, the problems that you can't repair, there's a way to find out how. And you have it a lot better than we had it when I was younger because we, we didn't have all these answers. We literally either had to get in, take it apart, and figure it out or something like that. So I, I don't know what I could, what we could have done back then. Other than that, hopefully you knew somebody that you could talk to and say, Hey, have you ever worked on one of these? Or you go to the supply house and, and look at some of the manufacturer's information to find out information on it. Tough way to do it. Gabriel Spaulding says, I just had my interview today for a plumbing apprenticeship. Was wondering what to expect if I get the job. Man, number one, expect your life to change. And, and, I, and I know that's crazy, but I got to tell you, to me, that's what this is all about. It's because 
what we do, if you get a job in the trades, here, here's what it does. Number one, you've got a whole new future ahead of you. You've got an opportunity to, to build a career, to build a profession that not only helps you, but it helps others. And if you do it right, it makes the world a better place. And, and I say that because I think there's a lot of people in the trades that don't make a difference. But I think that we all have that opportunity. If you constantly strive to be the very best plumber, to be the very best journeyman, the very best master, and then one day maybe decide to open your own company, the opportunities out there are phenomenal. And man, all I want to say is good luck to you. Congratulations. And, and I really hope that it works out well. Zach Lambert says, looking at getting in the trade, being 29, is it too late? No, not at all. I feel I will enjoy it better than working at a desk. Thanks again. And, and I would say absolutely. Number one, it, as you get out and learn the skills of the trade and get better at the trade and start mastering the trade, the cool thing about it is it, it becomes so rewarding because you see that you are making a change in the world. You're helping people. You're making their lives better. You are literally doing some cool things. And to me, and I, I got to tell you, I just enjoy the heck out of that. Uh, next question in the forum, and then I'm going to jump back over in the chat for just a minute. Gato says, may I know how many times does it take for you to complete a plumbing job? And to be honest, it should only take one time. And what I mean by that is when a customer calls you out, you're there to fix a problem. Fix it, double check it, and make sure that you do it right. Test it. Uh, when I go out and install a faucet, I double check, triple check, sometimes four or five if I'm not sure. I want to make sure there's no leaks on the faucet. There's no leaks on the drain. There's no leaks up above, down below, either one. So, man, really only one time to fix a plumbing job, at least if you do it right. Got more tea in here. That's a good thing, Julie. Thank you. Scroll back up here to that one right there. Maltz99, thank you for being in here. I appreciate the super sticker. I think those are so cool. I like it. All right. I'm trying to scroll back up and get back into the comments here. I think it was right around in here. So I'm going to start right here. Julian says, I'm a plumber in the DFW area. I'm an apprentice plumber about to be a tradesman. Do you have any tips or tricks for me to become a better plumber? Yeah, come to work for me. <laughs> you, you know, J Julian DeJesus, what I'll tell you is, look, never stop learning. And, and, and it's funny because we were really talking about this earlier today. First of all, those of you wanting to get into the trades, try to become the very best apprentice you can be. Always learn to look ahead. What is your plumber looking for next? What is your journeyman looking for next? What can you do to get ahead of him? Can you think ahead of him? If he's drilling a hole in the floor, do you know he needs a drop in an anchor, a set tool, a hammer, a piece of all thread, a nut, a washer? What all does he need? When you can start looking and thinking like that, it's going to make you better. Then when you become a, a journeyman, Become the best journeyman you can be, but always try to teach the apprentices below you. So, man, a lot of great things there, but those two will help. But, Julian, the number one thing I'll tell you, never stop learning. That is huge. Sean Strong says, we have got Hawaii weather here today. I love that. Thanks for your time and your videos. They're very helpful. Jonathan Vincent, thank you so much. Look, we enjoy doing these. We really do. Great job. Will you be my friend? Eh, you know, I don't, I don't have many friends. That's what it's about right there. Absolutely, guys. And the bot says, uh, hey, we, we, we do have merch out there talking about the mask a while ago, I guess. So y'all ever see any T-shirts, stuff like that, anything you like on our channel, man? Let me know which ones y'all like the best because we do have a lot of stuff out there. <clears throat> Eat, sleep, plum, repeat. I kind of love it. 
And I am almost scared to ask that. Marjol 2853, looking into getting in, getting a new build house. How often do you have to do a plumbing inspection before closing a new house build? You've, you've really only got to do three inspections. You've got to do your rough in, your underground. You've got to do your stack out, your top out to get your walls, which is the wall rough, get it covered up. Then you do your final, which is your final inspection to get your. Oh, that's so funny, Parker. You're great. Yeah, it's funny. Uh, Ed Stark, I actually, I, I sent a message to him. You know, one day y'all jump over there and, and, you know, talk to him and say, hey, look, man, you ever going to do a, a collaboration? I've reached out to him. I've reached out to Steve Lavamaneri. Never heard back from him. Reached out to Plumber Parts. Uh, James and I have chat some. Just the other day, I jumped in a live stream from uh, Renault Vision TV. Cool channel from Canada. So, man, so many things for us to talk about. I thought that would be neat. So a lot of different things that, that we're looking at and trying to do. So, and I love the idea uh, of being able to do collaborations with people. So looking forward to it. Let me get back into the forum real quick. Joshua Robertson says, what would be your water heater recommendation traditional steel or marathon plastic fiberglass I, I tell you what i pretty much the only water heaters we recommend are bradford white and i've been to their plant i've seen what all they do i've seen the way they do it i've seen the way they troubleshoot problems i've seen the way they bring water heaters in they've had problems with to do a, i call them a post-mortem what was wrong with it why did it not make it what happened so i love stuff like that Next question in the forum. Guys, remember, if you have a question, please jump over in the forum. Put it over in there. I will. I guarantee you, I will get to all of those. I try everything else, but but at least I know I get to. I don't miss those like I do stuff in the chat. All right. Nuegria Saxon looks like. What causes noise in the control panel for submersible pump? On the three phase, you know, the, there really shouldn't be any noises in the control panel. I guess every now and then there may be, maybe if some wires are loose or something like that, maybe switches clicking, different things, but really there just sh shouldn't be a lot of noise. So I'm not sure what kind of noise you're talking about or what it's doing. Parker Pasuki says, What is your favorite tool brand? like Metabo, Makita, Bosch, and et cetera. You like cobalt. I, I tell you what, <laughs> I'll tell you how old I am. Uh, I actually, I, I still love Craftsman, but I'm an old school plumber. That's what my dad had and, and started out using. The other thing that the, as a plumber, I, I've got to say Rigid, Milwaukee, DeWalt, th those are probably three brands that, that I've used for as long as I can remember. But for hand tools, I, I like, which look, y'all know that I shop at Ferguson. I love the, uh, well, my mind just went blank. Uh, man, boy, that happened, didn't it? See what happens when you, when you, when you go 90 miles an hour all day? Raptor. Uh, I love the Raptor tools because they're there, they're convenient, they work. And man, I use the heck out of them and I've tried tearing them up and I can't. So different brands like that, but rigid Milwaukee, DeWalt, those are tools that I've used forever. Even Craftsman, I, I still try to buy Craftsman. But you know what, I, I've got <laughs> I've got all kinds of tools. Matthew Mahez says, still considering the trades I wanna get in, still considering the trade I wanna get into. I know pre-COVID I could ask and shadow someone to see what the job is like, but hard to do that now and in Toronto. How would you suggest learning what the day-to-day -day is like for a trade I'm interested in? Number one, 
Matthew, here's one thing I'll tell you is if you hadn't done it yet, go to my YouTube channel and, and find the free mini course. And it's probably down in the link. And, and the reason that I say that is that's going to help you. That, it's going to ask you some questions and hopefully help you figure out what kind of part of the trade you want to be in. And what I mean by that, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find a, a deal over here. Uh, what I mean by that is, is that do you know if you want to do residential or commercial? Do you want to do if you want to, do you know if you want to do new construction or service? Do you know if you want to be union or non-union? And, and I ask all those things because when I got into plumbing, I had no idea what I wanted to do. I just knew that I was going to be a plumber. But after I got in plumbing for a while and started learning about all these different opportunities, and I kind of started looking around like, okay, what do I really want to do? And hopefully find a way to get in and do it all. And luckily for me, I have. So that's what I would tell you. Do that first. Then start watching YouTube videos. Find out what the day-to-day -day life is like. I've got videos where it shows me out in the field doing different things. Uh, I've got a friend who's an electrician, has two channels, uh, Electrician You and Journey to Master. And I got to tell you, uh, both of them are really, really good. So, you know, see what you want to do, figure it out, watch what, watch and learn what you can on YouTube to help make that decision for you. And I think it'll help you. Ernesto De Villa, how are you? Good to have you in here from Dallas, Texas. I love that. I have a restroom sink faucet that it doesn't matter how hard I try to shut the water, it does not close. How do you fix that without having to replace the faucet? I think it's worn out. Here's what I'll tell you, Ernesto, is figure out what brand it is. Shut the valves off, the angle stops under the cabinet, then open it up. If you've got the water stopped for sure, take the cartridge out. It's probably either a cartridge or washers and springs or seats or something like that. But if you can figure out what brand it is, you can figure out how to repair it. And I'll tell you what, most faucets don't need to be changed. A lot of plumbers, are. it's just it's easier to do it. And I get it. So just an idea. Matthew says, you just mentioned how you were flipping between union, non-union, residential, commercial, and that. What is the best or is it preferential? How do you determine which is for you, especially union and non-union? So Matthew, that free mini course I just talked about, go through it first. Here, here's the easy way to put it. <clears throat> and and just, just kind of quick and easy is when... I talk to people about it, I ask them for residential or commercial. Do you want to work on houses or do you want to work on some of the biggest buildings in town? Because commercial is going to be the biggest, residential is going to be houses. Now, residential may also do apartments and things like that, so it could get a little bigger. <clears throat> then the next question is, do you want a job that you just want to work on maybe one or two days, then you're in a different location? one or two days, then you're in a different location. That would be residential. Commercial, you could be on a job. I've been on jobs for up to five years. And I mean, literally the same job every day. So it's kind of, it's, it can be kind of crazy. Now, do you like building things? Cause that would be construction. Or do you like repairing things? Cause that would be service. And I've done it both, but now, man, I really love getting in, trying to figure out what the problems are and fixing them. So that's why service plumbing is, is really such a big deal for me. And then at the end, union or non-union, union mainly teaches commercial, where open shop does more residential. But the one thing I'll tell you is, if you think you ever want to open your own company, you probably want to look at residential and, and I'll even go further and say residential service is probably going to be your best bet. And, and I think it'll, it'll help you out more than anything. So I hope that helps. Uh, 
take that mini course and let me know what you think, because that free mini course really does explain a lot. <clears throat> well, this is easy. Uh, Michael Franco says, which plumbing company do you recommend the most? Texas green plumbing. Uh, I, 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 you know, it's funny. I, I've got a plumber who, who's leaving me to go to work in a water treatment plant. He's got a college degree. He's going to be using his degree. Uh, the opportunities ahead of him are phenomenal. And, and I mean, man, I'm going to miss him. I mean, we, we love our team. So the big thing to me, the big thing that I look at is when he came in the other day, he said, I got to tell you, he said, I think Texas Green Plumbing is the greatest company there is. We focus on culture. We focus on doing the right things. We train our plumbers. We go above and beyond to make sure we have the best people. So, <clears throat> Michael, man, that's about the only answer I can give you there, man. Sean Murray says, hey, Roger, I'm renovating my mother's two bathrooms. Main question is the first bathroom has no air vent from sink. Is that okay? Also, where may I send you pictures of the plumbing? You can post the pictures over on the subreddit that's actually on the screen right now. Uh, no, you're, the the every plumbing fixture needs a vent. Now, they may be revented or tied together or things like that, but no, it's not okay to not have it vented. I'm going to just jump over in the chat and say hello real quick. Hot water heater. Yeah, get off that. Uh, JP says franchise operator or independent. I love independent. I'm, I've never tried franchise. I've actually never even worked for a franchise, so I can't tell you good, bad, or any. But, uh, you know, it, it, it is what it is. And I'm trying to see what all the... Who was about up here and I can't find it. So maybe I'll just get past it. <clears throat> Christopher, I'm trying to read what you're writing and talking about, but I can't get up to it. Uh, good one here. Zignig AQ says, can you explain the difference between union and non-union? The union is like a labor organization. They, they, they have a training program where they bring so many students in every year and they, they literally help teach them the things they need to know. The union has a five-year training program. PHCC, I think, is a little bit quicker. And I think PHCC also does a lot for residential, <clears throat> which to me is phenomenal. So that's the biggest thing I'll tell you. One thing that I'll tell you, too, is also if you ever think you want to own your own company or work for yourself, you probably want to go non-union. And when I first started plumbing, I think the hardest aspect for me is just trying to figure it all out. I wanted to learn everything. And, and like I talked about a while ago, we didn't have the Internet, so I couldn't just go home and Google stuff and look it up. And there weren't any, to me, really any good plumbing books out there. So we just had to learn it however we could. Uh, Liz put a link in right here. Here is the link to the free mini course. Any of y'all that want to take a picture of this, I don't know if you can click on it here or if you've got to go over into it or what, but that right there, I promise you, will help you out a lot. Let me try to find one more time. Probably not going to do that one. Back in the forum. Got that one there done. And I want to say that thanks for Sean Strong and Neil, the Urban Explorer, both for being in here. Uh, I know Liz is in here. I think Grayson's in here. I think Virgil's in here. Julie and Amber. I got some great moderators. Thank you all so much for everything you do. Anonymous says, have you ever had something you couldn't fix? And, and this is good because uh, Raging Calm, I clicked on it the other day, so I'll, I'll check back into it. Uh, here's the thing is, I, f I found things that were almost impossible to fix, but, but there's always a way. You can always find a way. 
And what I mean is, you know, we had the freeze here a while back and we got in to fix pipes that literally had, I mean, were sandwiched in between studs. And we had to find out how do we cut some of these out, put more stuff back in to, to resupport it later. <clears throat> and man, it, when you first look at it, it's like, okay, this is impossible. I cannot get in here with a pro press. It's too tight. Can't get in with a torch. I'm going to burn it down. And you've got to look at what do I do and how do I do it? And, and that's part of the challenge. But, but to me also part of the fun part about being in the trades is, and, and I think that's why I love the service end of it so much. I love getting in, finding problems and finding a solution as to how we fix it. So, and all kinds of cool stuff. I, I just, I, I love the trade we're in. Jeff Bagel says, how many calls do we get a day? Uh, Amber Mendoza, if she's in here, would be the one to answer that. But literally, I think that we are booking 12 to 15 calls a day. The problem is we're so busy, we're turning down calls every day. I, I could hire two plumbers today, but they're going to have to be really, really good plumbers. and. By that, I mean what we're hiring for culture. I don't mean just a great plumber. They've got to fit the culture. They've got to look the part. We we have very clean cut, nice, neat, friendly plumbers. And it, it's funny. I get I get plumbers from Washington State, from New York, California, Houston, send me messages and say, Hey, look, I'm coming there to work for you. Uh we've got testing that we do to find out what kind of culture they have what do they believe in what are their thoughts beliefs goals what motivates them so stuff like that is just really huge and, and finding the best plumbers is hard to do the good thing is uh, i've got a marketing company uh he jumps in here every now and then a guy named roll got uh, ruan Mar marino i am getting tired uh Actually, I was looking, looking at one of the names in the questions here. Uh, he's made my phone blow up. And with what I'm doing on social media, that's made it blow up too. So it, it is. It, it's kind of interesting to watch the, the, the evolution that we've done, hiring the right teams, whether it be a marketing team, marketing members in-house, or groups and organizations that we're part of. And now I've got people calling me. I mean, I, I've literally, I mean, I, I've gone out and, and cussed and discussed options with companies of things they can do to grow. So a lot of different things out there and possible, but when your phones are blowing up, you need all the plumbers you can get. And that's what we're steadily working on, how to find the next best plumber and get them in here. So great question. Thank you, Jeff. And as for just calls, Amber, if you're in here, tell me how many calls we get a day. I'd be willing to bet right now we're still getting 20 to 30 calls a day. Next question from Joe Mitchell says, do you want to, oh, says you want to learn to be the best plumber you can start with the free mini course. It'll help you out. Jillian Jesus. Tips and tricks to be the best. Again, never stop learning. Christoph Robles says, I want to become a plumber and just recently retook the test for your local, but it seems like you need some sort of experience to get in. I've been looking at open shop, but any apprenticeship openings are few and far between. Uh, the way the job market is saturated with technician titles. Will being a technician count for me to get an apprentice license? I'm not sure what to do here. Now, I don't know what you mean by will being a technician. Uh, you know, the, the thing is, the union normally brings in people with no experience. And, and I like that because they bring them in and they, they train them. That, that's what the union is. It's a training facility. What you might do is try contacting 
either the union in your area, and, and if that's who you, you've tested through, it may be the interview process or something because they, they're looking for a certain mindset and attitude. So what I would tell you is look at what you can learn online, what you can practice at home, contact companies in your areas and find out, you know, what would it take to get a job with you? And man, it's, it's hard to tell you what part of the world are you in? Chris, Christoph, just so, just so I know, uh, uh, luckily for me, I, I know plumbers all around the country. Uh, Julia and I are actually headed to San Antonio next week to work with uh, a group that I, that I do a lot of stuff with nationwide, which are plumbers, electricians, roofers, HVAC techs, all kinds of people. It's a lot of fun. Chris Bacon says, why won't my toilet flush? Uh, man, I don't know. I guess you got big problems. Hamza. Abdo, yeah, you probably don't want to eat anything you pull out of the toilet, but you know what? That's up to you. Andy says, plain explain again, uh, maybe with crayons to the other plumbers that can't comprehend the flow restrictions with BNC PEX. Uh, I feel like I'm beating a dead horse explaining it. You know, it, it's, it's really easy. And <laughs> this is one big thing that I talk to people all the time about trying to use packs. If you use packs, increase the size of the line. The reason being the fittings are smaller and that does create a major flow restriction. And we've gone in and had to repipe and pretty much a lot of popping on new homes just for that reason. Michael Hadfield says, I'm on the smaller and weaker side of someone that's five foot 10. Do you need to be the most physically fit to be a plumber? No, you do not. I'm in the army and used to lifting 50 or 60 pounds. To be honest, Michael, you won't have any problem. Uh, if you're wanting to do commercial, I would check out the United Association. The union has uh, helmets to hard hats and uh, VIPs, veterans and popping to where they help you get into the trades. That could be great. Uh, Man, I, I think just about any company out there will will hire a veteran because we understand, look, you've already got a mental mindset of, of doing what needs to be done. I like that. So what I say is, man, I don't think you've got any problem with that. I love that. There's the answer to most of my questions. Have you searched Roger's videos? There's several in there showing you how. And I don't even know what the question was, but man, it, it – it does happen. I like this too. Johnny Firebird, 11 p.m. here, can't sleep. So this tired electrician listens to nice stream now. Thank you very much. Got another super chat here. It says cross posted. Okay, yes, exactly. And, and it's what I just said, guys. The uh, and I don't have any in here with me, so I can't really show it. But if you've got a normal pop size that's this big and you put a fitting in that's this big, that's going to create a flow restriction. And you can say, well, there's, there's still just the same amount of pressure. Great. Once you open up most of the faucets in the house, that pressure goes down because you don't have the volume because you've put in so many flow restrictors. So, man, Moss 99, you are dead on. Michael, I hope that that helped you on the military. I don't think you're going to have any problem. Sarah Everard, Everard, how are you doing? I got my drains blocked by an angry ex. What should I do? Uh, you probably want to call a plumber that has a sewer camera because you want to figure out what he used to clog them. What, what did he plug them up with? Uh, I've got a video out there which shows a plumber that got mad, put concrete down somebody's drain. It, it's crazy, but man, there are freak show people like that out there. And I just don't believe in it, but it's, a uh, it's something that happens. So Sarah, number one, I don't know if you've called a plumber yet. You may be able to rent a sewer machine. You may be able to rent a camera and look at it. You may want to call a plumber that way you can prove it. Uh, see what it is. You, you may want to 
I'll stop there because my next thought really wasn't that. Nice. Compared to water so compared to water heaters, how difficult are boilers replacement and troubleshooting? Uh, starting a new job tomorrow, never worked on boilers. You know, anything over 200,000 BTUs is a, okay, wait a minute, I'll back up and see that, see if I did something. <clears throat> Okay, maybe I got made fun of it happens. Uh, anything over 200,000 BTUs is a boiler. Now, we use the, uh, uh, look, th th this is a Bradford White. I don't know if you can see it from that camera. You, you can see part of it. This is a Bradford White tankless water here. I love these. Under 200,000 BTUs, though, so they're not a boiler. Water heaters and boilers can be completely different, but they still work on the same process. Cold water comes in, heat, whether it's gas or electric, heats it up, and, and then it goes back out. So all kinds of different possibilities, but the good thing is it's a great thing to learn. All right, Sam Kroon. Got a sticky plug. Is it? Cast, I mean, is it brass or is it plastic? Brandon Stone says, ever deal with stone lined water heaters? What do y'all think of them? I installed my hydrostones for Vaughn now, and boy, are they heavy. You know, I have never dealt one stone line. I've had gas line and things like that, but nothing quite as crazy as you're talking about. Mikhail says, hey, from Norway here question about the cold crisis you guys had is the plumbing not built for hard winters and why not uh that's a good question but here's what i'll tell you michael is i woke up a month ago and it was negative two degrees i've never seen that in my life and it, it's it, it's just something we're not built for and designed for uh it we're not built for earthquakes because we've never had them, but then we started having them lately. So, you know, the, the crazy thing is, it, it's kind of funny. We don't build for it because it's not something we ever expect. And, you know, you don't want to spend a whole lot of extra money preparing for something that never happens. So that's kind of how it works out. I got some crazy questions in here tonight. Some of y'all just ain't real bright. Sorry about that, but I'm being honest. AJ Roble says, what do you think about companies that have solely installed crews, service, and drain guys? You know, here's the good thing about that. They are literally gearing themselves for profit. And, and what I mean by that, and, and it's, it's literally, it's nothing bad. They are looking at everything they do and saying, who does this the best? And we can, can we keep them busy with that? So my question with you is, do you work for a company like that? And do you like it? Because I would get frustrated just doing water heaters every day or just cleaning drains every day. But man, some people just love that. They, they, they get, the repetitions in, they get good at it. They get fast at it. Uh, I've got friends that own some of the biggest plumbing companies in town and they've got guys that can install five water heaters a day. We can't knock them out that fast. So it doesn't help very much, but they've got down the systems and processes where it really works well. See, I knew somebody put my name in there. says, when I got my dishwasher installed, my plumber needed to hook into a live water line for the input. So you can't turn it off for just my apartment. He used a T, which he hooked in using a small explosive charge. Never heard of that. Franco T plus, do you have any experience with those or how would you do it? Uh, man, to me, you've got to find a way to shut the water off. And it's just part of the job. Do we use th Teflon thread in the United States? Yeah, we, we definitely use Teflon tape, uh, True Blue. 
<clears throat> Monster, all kinds of brands. Yeah. Teflon tape is amazing. Odie, uh, man, these companies make great products. So, so yes, we do. Let's see, before I miss something here. Sorry about that. Almost missed it. Christian says, what steps do you take when a client complains about the invoice price? You know, Christian, this is a really good question because normally our plumbers are supposed to give pricing up front. Uh, I have had customers complain about my pricing and I still trying to t tell them, hey, look, I explained everything to you beforehand. And they're like, yeah, but it didn't take you that long to fix it. Well, it, it didn't take me long because I'm good at what I did or I didn't have any problems or whatever. So there's a lot of different ways to look at it. But at the end of the day, you know, you, you've got to be able to sell them the value up front. And, and Steve says the same thing. Uh, give them the, the price up front. It's huge. And, and if you don't, man, you, you're always going to run into problems. But if you don't give them the pricing up front too, then they have a right to complain because they have, it's a, you can't just walk in and work all day and then tell somebody, hey, this is how much you owe me. I know on time and materials they do that, but that's why I think we've kind of all gotten away from TNM work. Now it's normally flat rate pricing, straightforward pricing, what whatever it is you want to call it. So Dylan Keaton says, hi, Roger. Thanks to your videos to help explain to me about plumbing. I start my apprenticeship Friday, an open shop residential company. What is the big mistake young, pl young plumbers make? You know, the biggest one I'll tell you, Dylan, is not listening to their journeyman. Listen and learn. One thing that I try to teach apprentices is never ask the same question twice. Meaning if you've asked it once, remember it. Learn the answer. Think about it. What can you do to make sure you remember it? If you need to write it down, if you need to put it in your notes, if you need to you know, make an audio, hey, uh, remember, pop runs downhill, not uphill, wh wh whatever it is. Always make sure that, that you listen to, you know, if you're working with a journeyman, this journeyman is taking time to teach you what he's taken a lifetime to learn. So if he's going to take time to show you something, take time to listen, take time to pay attention, and don't make that mistake. Big, big deal. Michael A. Martin says, removing 25-year-old copper from a house to replace it with PEX, should I rip it out of the walls or just cut out what I can and what is exposed in the crawl space? If you're changing it because it leaked, I would probably want to come all the way up into the wall, find out if you can open walls behind it or something like that. If you're just changing it to change it, I, I would ask you why. Uh, I have people call me all the time and say, hey, I just want to change out my copper. It's like, why? And, and look at what we talked about a while ago. If you're going to PEX, make sure you upsize everything. If not, you're going to have flow restrictions and problems that I promise you, you're not going to like. <clears throat> Here's a good one here. And, and this is good because, then thank you, Josh, because... We do have apprentices or people getting in the trades ask all the time, what can I do to get better? Roger, I have a new helper. He's been with me a month or so, a month or so. He's a good helper looking for an apprenticeship, but he never has this tape level, tape level or pencil. How would you go about it? I'm starting to get, I'm sure you mean frustrated. Josh, uh, when he shows up in the morning, I'd ask him, do you have your tape level, pencil, whatever you want him to have? If he says no, so then go home <clears throat> and just let him go home. And when he says, well, well, you know, I'm here. Yeah, but I expect you to bring these things every day. I can't come to work without my tools. You can't come without yours. And then what I would do is each week I would add something to it. You know, next week you need a uh, adjustable pliers. Next week you need an adjustable wrench. Next week you need a four-way screwdriver. I would slowly add to it and start making him learn, hey, I'm going to have to buy tools every week to get where I need to be, I think it's a great way. Josh, if he's not willing to bring them in and he's not willing to invest in himself, 
he's he's not worth keeping around just the way I look at it. <clears throat> but that's my thought. I could be wrong. I don't think I've ever said those words before. That was tough. I'm in Illinois trying to get in local 130, which has a lot of applicants. Yes, it does. There is no interview with the bigger locals. Here in Illinois, just all professional experiences forms via a Scantron sheet that has questions on previous construction experience under a contractor and hobbies while in high school and grades. Man, it's just, it's kind of tough and it's kind of tough to tell you what to do. Uh, I would say at that point, you may want to get a job with an open shop, learn everything that you can, try to get better. Uh, try to work for an open shop company that maybe specializes in some things that some unions don't. Meaning, look, we specialize in slab leaks and leak detection. My union doesn't even know how to spell slab leaks and leak detection. So it's something that we're really good at. So I would learn how you can get out and get good skills <clears throat> that maybe would help you bring things to them. Uh, already answered that one. Paul McFarlane says, if you didn't get into plumbing, what career path do you think you would have gone down? Love the video. Much respect from Glasgow, Scotland. You know, it, it's, it, it's easy for me just because I tried a lot of different things. <clears throat> I got into plumbing. I got out of plumbing. I became a hairstylist, a cosmetologist, uh, a massage therapist, a bouncer, a bodyguard a bartender. Uh, I have done so many different things, but I always end up back in plumbing because I love it. But I got to tell you, I did try many different things along the way. A lot of them while I still had a plumbing job. You know, it, it was really hard for me when I first started plumbing. I literally could not make the kind of money I wanted to make. And, and I say that because I, I had a, I had a son and I could not start out at, you know, eight dollars an hour nine dollars an hour whatever i was making and, and it'd be enough to make the living i wanted to make so i got a job tending bar i built fences i built redwood decks i learned how to do anything that i could to help me get better so josh i hope that helps you and paul i hope that helps you because you know, it, it really is. It's a great question. I don't know what I'd have done because I tried other things, but I always ended up back in plumbing. I just literally love what we do. And I think it's pretty cool. <clears throat> okay. Roger, do you agree that unions should supply power tools or should you use your own if you can't, if you can afford them? <clears throat> Jonathan, here, here's what I'll tell you is I think most unions do supply the power tools. I know here at Local 100, the power tools were supplied by them. You had to supply the hand tools, but you also had a tool allowance, meaning they paid you so much money every month or every hour to help cover your tools. Used to in the beginning when I first started the union, I mean – they'd supply tape measures and you'd be surprised how many times once a tape measure kind of got rough guys would just throw it on the door on the floor and bust it and say hey i need a new tape measure <clears throat> people don't take care of what they don't invest in so even on power tools i mean i i've seen i've seen plumbers i can hand them an eight thousand dollar camera and they throw it in the back of a truck like it's a water hose i don't care and they're not all like that, so don't don't be thinking it's all my plumbers. But you, if people aren't invested in it, if they're not spending their money on it, they really don't take care of it for the most part. Now, I will say this. I've got a lot of good plumbers now, and it helps. But there's still times that I go look in trucks, and I'm thinking, you would never treat your stuff this way. Why do you treat mine that way? So I see it both ways. But yes, unions should supply the power tools because that's a big investment. But I even look, I know open shop plumbers that supply everything from sewer cameras, sewer machines, 
locating equipment because they want to be 100% efficient. They want to show up at the job and never have to leave for anything. So I think it's great. Zach Collins says, what do you think of Delta faucet products? I have worked for them for two years and it's great to see plumbers like you giving out accurate advice when installing faucets. Look, I, I like Delta. I, I tell people, because here's the deal. Uh, I don't, I, I don't like to pick out their faucets. So I tell them, look, I like Fister. I like Delta. I like American Standard. I like Moen. I like Coer. Pick out the pick out a name brand that you like. Pick out a name brand that works for you, and don't ask me to pick it out because if I go install it and you ain't there, you're gonna come home and say, "Look, I don't like this." You're gonna want me to change it out. So I always tell them buy a name brand, buy a brand that you've heard, and hopefully, it's not impossible to install. Good questions today. Jesse says. I was wondering if you've installed any of the Santa Flow systems and what you thought of them. Uh, God, which Santa Flow systems are you talking about? I say, man, I've, so, I've installed so many plumbing, so much plumbing stuff. I don't, I don't even know what all I've installed, but Santa Flow sounds familiar. Now I gotta go look it up. Okay, no, you're talk you're talking about like the mace rating pumps and stuff. No, I have not. I've had people send me stuff on them. I've never installed one. So, man, that's one you got me on, Jesse. I hadn't done that. Next question. Do plumbers really get hit on with board housewives as some X rated sites make it out? Uh, you know, I, I've been, okay, so y'all going to get to hear the whole story. I, I've been hit on by housewives. I've been hit on by guys in parking lots. You know, there's just something about being a plumber. People love it. Don't ask me what it is. Don't ask me why it is. But, yes, it, it does happen. Okay, so when did you start as a plumber? And I'm just kind of jumping back over in the chat because I see some questions. But I will tell you this, guys, look. If you want to guarantee that your question gets answered, jump over in the chat. I mean, jump over into the forum, ask it there. I believe that we've got a link to it tagged in the top. Jump over there and ask your question. I'm just, I saw a couple of things pop up in the chat. So I wanted to jump over here. Uh, I, I started plumbing when I was 16 years old in 1980. So just to tell you how old I am. Uh, answered that one right there. Kind of scrolled down to see who I was in here. Stig is still in here. Good to have you here. So um, now I want to ask you all some questions. Look, I get asked questions all the time. So I'm, I'm going to have fun tonight. Here's my question. And I, I've asked, I, I know that we've got a lot of plumbers in here, a lot of people in the trades in here. I think that is really cool. So my question to you is, what were your biggest obstacles with getting in the trades? And, you know, with, with me, I want to start off by, by, by saying, look, I had been told my whole life by my, my parents, like, you need to go to college. You need to do this. They just didn't tell me, oh, by the way, you got to make good grades to do it. So the, the, the funny thing is, what have... What is it that were your biggest obstacles? Meaning, did your parents tell you, hey, look, you've got to go to college? Was it hard to find a job in the trades? Was it hard to just get that, that initial interview that, that, or hard to get the right tools or whatever? What is your biggest obstacle with getting a job in the trades? And if you're an apprentice in here or you're, you, you're, you're kind of, not sure. Think, go back and think about, was it easy for you to get in the trades? If so, what made it easy? And how, how was it so easy for you to get a job? And some people can do that because they can say, look, I had connections. I had friends and family. I had this. I had this. Here's what I want to tell you is 
Okay, wait a minute. Steve Harlow says, Zoe, I hope they are replacing cast iron with PEX. Did you say R? Uh, my question is, out of high school, out of college, whenever you decided, hey, I'm going to get into the trades or I'm going to become a plumber, electrician, whatever it is, what is it that made you think, I don't think I can do this or I don't want to do this? Or what was your obstacle? What did people keep telling you to make you think, maybe I can't do this? Because I truthfully think we can do it. I think we can all do it. And I just want to know what were your obstacles? Because I taught in the union. And I got to teach and, and talk to apprentices almost every night. And the cool thing about it is I think that it's getting easier to get into the trades, but I just, I want to ask in the group here, you know, what are the biggest obstacles that y'all have faced getting into the trades? And then the next one is what are the biggest benefits now that you are in the trades or once you got in the trades, what benefits do you look back at and say, I am so grateful because one of the big ones for me was always being able to help other people, being able to help other people with their problems, help them fix their problems, and sometimes just talk to them about their problems and explain it to them. I love that. Okay. And Zoe, I, I guess I'm feeding off of, of what Steve posted a while ago. It says, Zoe asked a question in here. So I found a great plumber in my area to replace my old cast iron pipes in my house with PEX. Anything I should check for after everything is done this week? Yeah, if he's replacing cast iron with PEX, you've got problems. PVC is what you replace cast iron with. He may be replacing copper or galvanized with PEX. If he's replacing cast iron with PEX, you've got big problems. So I'm going to scroll back through these here in just a second. Do me a favor. Let, leave me your answers in the chat. What is the biggest obstacle you had with getting into the trades? And now that you're in it, what is the biggest benefit that you like about being in the trades? And I'm just asking because let me get this over here. Terrence Matthew says, would you say working for yourself over a company is better? is there isn't a ceiling to how far you can grow financially. But yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that, and, and this is something that whenever I'm teaching, be good. When, whenever I'm teaching, give me just one second. I need to fatten this mic. Hold on. How's that, everybody? Uh, sorry, it got real loose there and started to fall off. You know, the, the, the big thing is, and I tell this anytime that I'm working with apprentices or, or, or people wanting to get in the trades, or even people that are in the trades are like, what can I do to get better? I always ask them, know your end game. What do you want to do? Do you want to, on your own company, do you just want to be a journeyman forever? Do you just want to work? put up a retirement for, for 30 years and then get out. What do you want to do? And if you can figure all that out, it, it, it makes a big difference. And, and to me, that part is huge. So the cool thing about it is make it work. Once you know what you want to do, hold on, I'm trying to do something here real quick. I'm trying to figure something out. My thought process is, yes, owning your own company is great. It's a lot of hard work. So what I want to tell you there is understand that going in. And as long as you understand that going in, you're fine. But that's why I teach people all the time, whether you're starting out as an apprentice 
whether you are, are, are learning about me as a journeyman or, or maybe you've been a journeyman for a while, now you're a foreman or superintendent, never stop learning. Always try to be the best and know what your end game is. Do you want to own your own company? Do you want to work for yourself? Do you want to run companies for other people? And there's a lot of people that make great money being directors of operation, project managers. I, I made great money in the union as a superintendent. I made great money as a foreman. God, I made, I made great money as a, as, a, as a plumber. And when you start moving up and making more money, it, it gets harder to leave because you're like, look, I, I'm sitting here managing this company. I'm making $110,000 a year. Do I really want to go open my own company because there's no certainty to it? I don't know that I can make this kind of money. Uh, there's, there's a lot of other things that I could be doing in my spare time instead of worrying about my company and making it grow. So you've got to think about that and you've got to ask those, you've got to ask yourself those questions. Do I think it's better? Yeah, I think it's better for me. I'm not the kind of guy that's really good at working for other people because I want things done my way, but I think I'm a good guy to work for because I want to teach people how to be the very best they can be. And man, I hope that helps you out because th that's the way I see it. Now, this is Claire. I'm going to tell you, this is a long, long question. Uh, I find your videos fascinating. Thank you very much. Uh, currently working alongside guys, still learning, but the only thing is, Started texting, being very crude with me, even at work, uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, number one, I'd get away. Um, not wanting to say anything because I can't afford to lose out. Uh, building my skills. Also, don't want to seem dramatic too. Here's what I'll tell you is, is number one, I would start looking for a new job. It was very creepy. Even a customer noticed that and told him he shouldn't say that. Said she's good with her. Yeah, I would. Uh, I would definitely talk to the company you work for. That, that is completely unacceptable, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing here. But you know, look, I, I help recruit women into the trades all the time. I think the trades are a, a great opportunity for women, and th the things that you're talking about. Number one, it's against the law. Number two, uh, nobody should ever treat a female that way, whether it is a, an apprentice, uh, somebody working with them, wh whatever it is. And yeah, you, you, you definitely need to do something about it because if you don't, it's going to keep getting worse. And what I would do is I would go in and talk to the, the owner of the company, the HR department, somebody like that. And man, uh, start documenting it, whatever you want to do. But yeah, I would talk about it and, you know, maybe you talk to him about it in front of them and just say, Hey, look, I'm gonna let you know now, no, now this is not acceptable with me. And if you think it is, you are completely mistaken, but yeah, I would address it now because if you don't, it's going to get worse. And if you let it keep getting worse, then what he's going to say, look, we've been doing this forever. It's okay. So you want to make sure that you, you handle that quickly. And if there's anything I can do to help you, look, send me a message. Let me know. Mandriel says, any tips on going through the interview process for the union? I'm looking to apply soon. Yeah. And, and, and I'll tell you this is, is, look, guys, I've got a lot of videos over on my YouTube channel, which is where we're at. But, but teaching you the questions that they're going to ask. I, I've got a ton of information that'll help you. The, the one thing I'll tell you, first of all, is go through the mini course and figure out, do you really want to be in the union? Do you want to be residential or commercial? Do you want to do service or new construction? Do you want to do union or non-union? You need to ask yourself all those questions. Because the last thing you want to do is get in the union for four or five years, realize you don't like it, and then try to get out. And then realize a lot of people don't want you because you're a union hand and you learned certain ways and this and that. So, man, just make sure you know what you're doing before you get in it. 
Zach Peterson said, what's the best way to get a faucet head off when extremely stuck and pliers won't work? And uh, I've had to cut them out before with a saw. <clears throat> There's a lot of different things that you can do or may have to do. Look, it's not always easy and it's not always by the textbook, meaning it's not just, hey, grab the wrench, loosen this nut, boom, 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 it happens. Uh, if Sean Strong's in here or Steve Harloa, maybe they can tell you, look, sometimes it gets crazy. And, and sometimes you have to do the completely unexpected to make things happen. So do what you can, do whatever you can. But man, at the end of the day, I have literally had to cut stuff out before. And at that point, it is what it is. Answered that one. Guys, please remember, if you got any questions that you want to guarantee that they get answered, please do me a favor. Jump over into the form. Ask your questions there. Uh, I guarantee you, I will get to every one of those. Sebastian says, tell me if a customer has ever tried to scam you for money. Sebastian, not for money. They've tried to scam me out of money, meaning I've had customers try and say, uh, <clears throat> hey, y'all didn't do all this. Hey, you didn't do all that. Uh, hey, that's not, that's not what you said you were going to do. That's why we write up our estimates. We have them sign them. We have them pre-approve them. We email, them to, email it to them. Sean Strong says, get the saws off. It's what it is. It's what it's there for. Uh, so, Sebastian, a lot of things like that. It, these days, guys, look, it's all CYA, okay? You've got to make sure you document everything you do, why you do it, how you do it. Have them sign it before you start anything. If you don't, you're going to get in trouble. I want to put this up here just because I see this. JP says, my advice to women is never be okay with bad behavior, but ground rules in early about the way you want to be treated. Amen. And <clears throat> guys, here's the deal. And, and, and look, I, I know that the trades are predominantly male oriented, but I've worked around women almost the entire time I've been in the trades. And I've never once had a problem or seen a problem where that would be acceptable. Uh, I've never seen it happen or I'd say, Hey dude, look, you, we can't do that. You can't do that. Uh, I like this too. Jenga 79 says to the lady getting abuse at work, wear a body cam if possible, or you know what? St stick a phone in your pocket where you got a camera sticking out. And that way you can say, you know, Hey, look, put it on record. Say, Hey, look, you, you can't talk to me like that. Oh, I think it's funny. Hey, when you tell people that, I'm good with my hands or my mouth on pipe or stuff like that. That's not acceptable. And, and let him say, oh, I think it's funny. I think it's acceptable. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, then you go and show your boss, say, hey, either you do something about this, or it'll be on the evening news tonight, and I'll do something about it. And you may not want to go that far in the beginning, but if they don't do anything, man, it's it's a problem that can be addressed. So, answer those two. And I'll jump back over in the chat just a second because I want to hear what y'all think about that. Jaden Taylor says, <clears throat> what do you find most enjoyable about either plumbing or YouTube? And I can answer both of those. What I find most enjoyable about plumbing is, look, I still love plumbing. I love the trade. I love the, the life that it has afforded me, the opportunity. I, man, I've got a house, a truck. I've had a motorcycle. I, I, I do what I want to do. And I joined the union in 97. I was open shop since 1980. So 17 years before then. And, and, and the big thing about it is, look, I, I love what I do. I still do. But it's always afforded me a good living. But, but I want to I make something very clear. I've always tried to work harder than everybody else. I've always tried to have more skills, more value, more assets. What can I learn and do better than anybody else here? Because it will lead to making more money. And Sean says, ladies getting mistreated at work, get the sawzall. 
or the grinder. You know, whichever one, it'll work. I like that. Uh, so that's what I enjoy about plumbing. What I enjoy about YouTube, what I'm doing right here, building a community, building engagement. I have made friends right here through YouTube from around the world. And to me, that's cool. I had a company call me today and ask me questions about what they could do to learn more about the plumbing industry, what they could do to learn more about communicating and working with plumbers. And I'm like, man, just, just get in and read my comments. Uh, people tell you all the time what's on their mind. And I love it. I think it's a great thing for all of us. So I love that most about YouTube and just making content. I, I literally, if you'd have told me three years ago, which I literally started about three years ago, our first video really went up. But the first video that we started doing for this, I learned the end of February and very beginning of March about YouTube. I knew I wanted to start doing it. We decided the first week of April, we would start putting videos up. That was 2018. So three years ago, I had really never done this. Now it's like, you know what? Turn on the camera. I will jump in front of it. We'll start talking about plumbing. I want to help people grow, but I want to help people grow the right way. I want to help them learn the right way to do things. If you want to be the best plumber in the world, I can tell you the things to learn to help you get there. And I promise you it will help. And that's what I like about YouTube. It gives me that opportunity. Uh, Janine Patricia says, I believe it's vitally important to wear the correct breathing apparatus is when you're checking out any leak detection or leak question for a repair. How do you feel about this? Do you think it's vitally important to wear a breathing apparatus? <clears throat> Here's my thing. Normally we're dealing with water leaks, so we really don't worry about that. And, and here's why the electronic equipment we have, I don't want it messing with our ears. And if you're wearing something that's forcing the air out by your ears, I think it could mess you up. So we don't wear any breathing apparatus unless we're in a house where we know people have COVID, then we have to look at it that way. So we've just, we're constantly looking at what can we do to do things better and still stay within the confines of what we should be doing and how to do it. So kind of crazy. And Miss Jeanette says, widow and retired after spraying bleach for white mold in the basement, does it damage copper, which now has spots on it? Uh, copper, you know, bleach should not damage copper. Shouldn't damage copper or plastic either one. So I think you're good. And she is in Alabama. I love that. Thank you for watching the videos. I do appreciate it. Mandy Creighton says, hi, Roger. First off, just want to say you have an amazing business and YouTube channel. Uh, you're so professional. Thank you very much. I didn't know if you've already been asked this, but do you ever have jobs where you have to walk away because of terrible customers or non-payers? Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Mandy, here, here's what I'll tell you. It, is Look, we, we all get those customers that we want to walk away from. But what we all need to remember is those customers are our lifeline. They are the support for our business. If we don't try to find a way to work with them, it's going to be hard on us. Have I ever wanted to walk away? I have walked away from jobs before, but I, I often look back and say, yo, what could I have done different? So I, I really, I think it's kind of tough. I think if we allow ourselves to walk away from one customer, we allow ourselves to walk away from many of them. So I, I really, I try to tell my guys, look, unless a customer just, you know, it is impossible to deal with, I want to try to find a way. And, and Amber and Julie will tell you the same thing. I constantly look at what can we do to try to resolve a problem, solve a problem, or help a customer. 
And Steve Harloa says, I literally just had to cut out the tub drain to install a toe touch stopper last night in a vacant house with no power on in the second floor and is working on the second floor. But hey, you got it done. Good for you, man. I still love this. Sean, you're right. <clears throat> and correct. It's not funny. I don't know if I'd have been joking though. Uh, I like this here. Michael says, I can't wait for you to show the fails that you actually had to fix. I know you don't like to talk smack on other companies, but I would love to see more before and after type of things. I'll tell you what, talk to Sean Strong, who's in here. Uh, we, we are constantly getting stuff off TikTok, and we've got some great, good and bad plumbing pictures and videos and stuff like that over there. So it's, it's always funny. Okay, now this is actually funny. If your roommate is blind, don't leave a plunger in the toilet. It will not be good. Uh, you're right. Plumbing is not for everyone. And one of my best friends, who's actually a plumber and owns a plumbing business here in Dallas, actually talked me into getting into the trades. That's why I did. He told me one night about his three older brothers and dad that were all plumbers. And I loved it. I've loved it ever since, so it's been good. I am going to jump back over in the form real quick. Mandy, thank you so much. Zach Patterson says, what is the grossest job you've ever had to do since you started doing this line of work? Those of y'all that have, have ever told me or, or ever listened to me talk about it, the, the only job I've ever worked, walked away from is literally I had just started doing service work. I worked for a company. I'll say we have, talk about a good another good one. Flash in your pan is in here. And if y'all have not seen their channel, you need to go over and check out their YouTube channel. These guys are great. And number one, man, they're just amazing people. And I, I love watching what they do. So and you're interested in, in, in gold and fun stuff, go check them out. Good to see you in here. So like I said, that's the channel you want to subscribe to. Uh, back over to you real quick, Zach. Uh, the, on, the only job I've ever intentionally walked away from is I went over to a house where I got called about a stopped up toilet. And it wasn't a house. It was an apartment building. And I walked in this building. And, and walking down the hallway, it was one of those where all the apartments share a common hallway inside the building. And I walked down this corridor, and as I got close to the apartment, you could already smell it. And as I walked in, the lady literally just sat on the couch and said, it's back there. The front door was already open. I mean, most of these were open. And I walked in, and when I walked in and went back into that bathroom, I want you to know the toilet had poop and paper mounded over the top of it. It's like it stopped up and they just kept using it and, and probably used it for two weeks before they called anybody. There were, there was paper and, and trash piling over the trash can. And I just looked at it and, and I walked back out to the truck and I called my office and I said, Hey, y'all need to get somebody over here to fix this. And I mean, literally we had radios in the trucks back then and they said, you're there, you fix it. And I said, guys, you don't understand. I'm not working on this. And they messed up because they told me I didn't have a choice. And I'll tell you what, as grownups, I think we all have choices. My choice was I don't need to work at this company. And, and that was the choice I made. Is it the wrong thing? It probably is. It probably could have been handled a lot different. But I was young and learning and, and didn't understand how to handle things politically correct. Rodolfo says, passed my aptitude test, have my union apprenticeship interview in two weeks. Any tips? Yes, Rodolfo, number one, go to my YouTube channel, the videos, search how to get started in the trades, how to get into the trades, things like that. Man, I, I've, I've got a ton of videos that will help put y'all, and, and I say y'all because Rodolfo, I, somebody asked this question earlier. You can get so far ahead of everybody in your class by watching the videos that I do and learning the things I'm talking about. And I've got interview or 
videos that are about the interview, questions they're going to ask, questions you should be prepared to ask them. And I'm telling you, it will really help you out. Claire says, well, another long one here, Claire. Thank you so much uh, and your YouTube viewers for your kind comments. Sitting here with tears in my eyes with the kindness. Look, believe it or not, look, we may be plumbers, but, but we're, we're really good people. Uh, the only thing I'm worried about is the person who's being so crude to me is actually the boss's good friend. Uh, just been sad because I feel like no matter what I do, I'll be the one out of a job and I've worked so hard to get where I'm at. Also, the amount of women with false claims uh, with this whole Me Too movement has made me so tentative to say anything. Anyway, sorry for taking up everyone's time and thank you for the camera. And thank you. The camera sounds like my idea with my cell phone. I tell you what, I love that idea. Uh, you know, <laughs> I tell you what, you video that, send it to me. I'll put it on YouTube and say, see what kind of jack legged people are out there. Uh, not, not really. That, that wouldn't be good to do. But at least then if you can take it out to the owner of the company and say, look, you've got a problem here and I really like this job and I want to keep it, but this is not acceptable. How are we going to fix this? If you go in with a plot friendly attitude like that, if you do get fired, trust me, you, 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 you've got a legal lawsuit right there. You will own that company. So I like the idea of the camera and you just tell him, look, I'm bringing this in to show you, uh, make sure you send a copy of it somewhere. That way, if they try to take your camera and delete it, you say, don't worry about it. I've got another copy. Uh, yeah. If you want to chat about this, send me a message. Uh, I will help you out any way I can and, and send me another message too. And just let me know what part of the country are you in? Just out of curiosity. I know people all across the country looking for good people all the time. And, and I love your ideas and your mindset. So, I, and I like the way you're handling this. So good luck to you. And you can put it back in the, the forum where you're from. If you don't want to tell everybody, I'm good with that. Raj says, what's the Red Seal equivalent in the United States? Uh, since I'm not in Canada, I can't tell you exactly what the Red Seal is. I mean, I know it is, what it is. I hear people ask about it all the time. In the United States, there's a tradesman license in most states. There's a journeyman, and then there's a master. And then in Texas, there's an RMP, Responsible Master Plumber, that you actually have to take a course to become an entrepreneur to own your own company. So great. You tell me, and you can put it here or put it in the chat, what the difference is. Uh, I hear people tell me about the Red Seal all the time. Here's one thing that I like about Canada. I think with the Red Seal, and, and you can explain it to me, I think you can actually work all across the country with the same license. I would love to see that in the United States. Mac Baker says, I've seen earthworms and roaches in my sink pipes while I was snaking it. What does it mean? You know, it either means they're getting in through your clean out or you possibly have a break in under the slab that they're getting in through there. Uh, after you snaked it, did you clean it out or did you camera it? to see if there's any major breaks. Just curious. Ahmad says, hello, Mr. Wakefield. How can you find a reliable apprenticeship program? What things should you look for before you settle on one? And what are some red flags to watch out for? And Ahmad, this is really good because if you go into my videos, I talk about the interview process, questions, and, and things like that. And, and I think it, it's really good to know what questions to ask them, not just them asking you. But, you know, the, the union has a good training progr program. PHCC has a great training program. Um, I don't know about any of these other ones that, that you can buy online. I don't know about any of the trade schools. I know that some of them are good. So I know that there's always that possibility. You know, a lot of times, I mean, look, I, I became a pretty good plumber, but I started out just working as a helper for an open shop plumbing company. But I got in there, worked hard, and learned as much as I could. 
So to me, it's pretty cool. Steve Arloa says, just want to say thank you. Even after 27 years, still learned a few new things from you. And I appreciate it. Much love and aloha. Brother, number one, hey, thank you. I, I definitely appreciate you being here week after week. I think it's phenomenal. Uh, you, Sean, so many people that jump in here and do that, that make this wonderful. So, Steve, thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. Uh, oh, I like this. Enjoy your channel from Belfast, Ireland. Good to have you in here. How often do you use cast iron drains? Believe it or not, over here, we use them all the time. You know, Tom, good question. Uh, I don't know what kind of ejectors they use. I don't think they use an ejector. I think they use a vacuum system that stores it on the plane, and then they clean it out whenever they get to the office or to the airport. And another good one here. Well, I want to get this right. Meliotis says, have you seen radiated, radiated, heated home with packs? You know, I have not, but I've got friends that actually do radiant piping and plumbing. Uh, that, that use the 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 dual tankless water heaters, so or dual purpose. I've never done it. No, I mean, look, man, I'm in Texas where it's normally 75, 80 degrees most of the year. So this is something that I've never done, but I'm learning. Uh, well, here's one that I missed. I want to get back to. Meximan said, Meximan and cheese. I like that. Love your channel, especially your reaction to plumbing. Uh, I think you have a great time looking at some of the plumbing in water-cooled PCs. I will have to check that out. And I actually used to have one. I used to have one of the first Sonys that had the water-cooled uh, cooling system. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, man, which videos in specific? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Guys, really... And you can go to my YouTube channel and use the little question, the search, or magnifying glass, the search bar getting into the trades, getting started in plumbing, stuff like that, that there's a million different things that you can get in there and learn. And it really is pretty cool. Captain Sparks, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Make that do that. Back to the subreddit. And now I get to just kind of play around and have fun here. I, got, I wanted to show you all. I don't do this very often, but I'll tell you what, Grayson did such a good job. Now I don't even see it. Oh, man. I it, there, there we go. Yeah. So I say, look, if you like the video, please do. And then subscribe to the channel and make sure you ring the bell so you don't miss anything. Guys, tell me this. Have you, have you learned anything today? Have you had fun today? Uh, have you got in here and, and actually got some value out of this. Uh, I hope that you have. Mm. Go back right there. There we go. <laughs> that, 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 okay. So, so Claire, you definitely need to get in touch with me. I, I, I'm not going to tell everybody where you're from. That way, if this is really your name, that there's no problem. Uh, I want you to know, I don't even want to say that. Uh, <laughs> here's, here, uh, okay, I'll, I'll pull that up in just a second. Claire, here, here's, here's what I want to tell you. You definitely need to reach out to me, contact me, send me a message. You can send me a message on LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, wherever, just DM me. I'd like to talk to you about where you're at, who you're working for, things like that. I know companies there, some that are really good, but I think that I can help you get an opportunity. And I, I don't believe with what's happening, as you can tell from most of the plumbers in here, they don't either. So anything that we can do to help you, I, I promise you we will try. And with where you're located, I really think I can help you a lot. So if you'll find a way to message me, I will make sure that 
I contact you and, and see what we can do about finding a way to help you. I think that would be good. And I think it'd be good for you. And if you want to move to Dallas, you know, we're always looking for plumbers. Uh, the answer Christian St. Pierre is no, I'm not on tools day to day unless I'm in the office or, or training room or doing something doing videos. Sometimes I get on tools here. Sometimes I get on tools at home. I'm actually making a video about a kitchen faucet install and a contest. That if y'all want to win money, it is going to be really cool. And I love this right here. Jace Murphy says, Roger, you got to stop making these videos. My wife watches them, and then I have to wash my sheets constantly. I got to tell you, that's pretty funny. Jace, thank you very much. Uh, and I love the attitude. You got to stop doing this, man. Uh, don't understand all that, so I'm going to kind of skip that one over. And no, I'm not on the tools. And every time I see that, I get a stomach ache. Here we go. Got Rodney Townsend from Two Harbors, Minnesota. Pretty cool. See, there we go. Do you need any helpers or apprentices at the moment? You know, I think really right now, and, and, and I know Claire, look, if, if she wanted to come to Dallas, uh, I don't think I need any apprentices right now, but I'm looking for two more plumbers right now. And it, that there's a reason, but the, the cool thing is we're, we're always looking for plumbers and apprentices and helpers that want to improve and learn and grow. So I know I said no, but yeah, in a, in a way we are. There was, you know, I'll scroll up there and find those here in a little bit. Uh, guys, I have... I got just a few more questions here in the chat I'm, uh, or in the forum. I'm going to answer those. We may get out of here just a little bit early today because I've kind of <clears throat> gone through the questions pretty good. Tristan Turner says, how much do you charge for rotting lines like sinks and toilets? I think we do a drain cleaning for $199. That includes a camera, but it's, it's one drain. It's not multiple drains. You know, you've got to know your pricing going in. So having your set pricing, fixed rate pricing, flat rate pricing, straightforward pricing, whatever you want to call it, knowing what your pricing is up front. And, and it, it's easy for me to tell you what my pricing is. Tristan, what I'll tell you is you've got to know what it costs you to do that job. What does it cost you to go in, do that job, and, and do it well? And are you going to make profit on it? And even at 199, we probably don't make profit, but by running a camera, we verify that we clean the drain, but also if there's a break or anything, now we can give them other options. So we always look at it that way. And man, I saw something while ago. I was gonna make a comment about and it's gone now. All right. Toilets got that. Next question, Jonathan says, I'm a first-year apprentice and I have learning disability, but when I run work, it comes out very clean and precise. I try to let my work speak for itself, yet I still don't get the confidence from them to, conti from them to continue on my own. How can I change that? You know, Jonathan, here, here's a good thing. And, and, and look, plumbing can be learned by anybody. And, you know, to say you have a learning disability, number one, I tell you, never put that on yourself. We all learn different ways, each one of us. So what I would tell you is, is just because you don't learn the same way I do, doesn't mean you have a learning disability or I do. If, if you can learn to tie your shoes, you can learn plumbing because all that is is repetition. And I don't know how old you are or how long, but since you're a first-year apprentice, if you are doing good work, number one, take pictures of your work. Put it in the subreddit. I don't know if Sean's still in here or not, but we get pic people that put pictures in subreddit all the time. And let me see if I do this. If it'll... Uh, There's the link to the subreddit. 
And the reason I put this up here is we have people put work in all the time and say, Hey, this is the first time I've ever installed one of these. What do you think? And really the guys in there are pretty good about giving constructive criticism, not just, you know, Hey Roger, that sucks. You're horrible. You don't know what you're doing. Quit plumbing and, you know, go, go make French fries at McDonald's. People are really pretty good. Now, don't get me wrong. You may get some in there that say, Hey, you're not good at what you do. Go, go flip fries at McDonald's. But for the most part, it's a pretty good group and they're pretty good people. So what I would tell you is try to get in, try to put pictures, try and put videos, try and put anything up showing your work and, and, and accept the constructive criticism. Because if you can accept it, I, I really think it'll help you out. But don't put the learning disability on yourself. We all learn different ways. What I want to tell you is just realize that you do have the ability to learn. And if you're a first year apprentice, you're already in there and you're learning and you say it comes out clean and precise. I'll tell you what, I will take that any day, any day of the week over somebody who just throws it in. Yeah. Sean, Sean says things like some people just never learn and it, at least you're learning. So I think that's cool. And I mean that, that really is neat. Nicholas says, what is the best faucet brand? There's so many. I can't tell you which one's the best. That There's best things about all of them. Some have better warranties. Some have better installations. Uh, the video that I worked on Saturday, and this is a kitchen faucet you can install in about well, under 100 seconds. You want to win some money? Get good at it and install it the fastest. Uh, that's all I'm going to tell you right now, but man, there's some cool stuff coming up on it, and it's going to be fun. So... You know, my, my thing is, what brand do you like best? And, and I ask that because I don't even buy faucets for people. If they say, hey, I want y'all to come install a new kitchen faucet, I tell them, go to Ferguson, go to Ferguson.com, pick out the one you want, order it, have it shipped there, we'll come install it. I'll talk them through a, a one hole to a four hole and, and explain all the differences to them. But I just got to tell you, man, there's too many different brands. Uh, I kind of like Sean. I heard him earlier say, look, we, we don't ever recommend Glacier Bay or, or Mansfield or something like that. Uh, pick brands that you like and tell people, look, I really like these name brands. And, and my thing is, if you've got a name brand that you've heard before or they've heard before, chances are, they're going to be able to find one that they like, let them pick it out. That way you don't get in trouble for picking out the wrong one. Thomas says, thank you for all the great videos. Got a bit of an odd one recently. An aunt tipped a few very big candles by her accident in the bathroom sink. Was removing and changing the whole trap the only and best solution? Yeah, you're, you're never going to get all that out. I, I like your idea. Just get in there and change it. Don't worry about it. Don't try to find it. Don't try to fight it. You'll be good. Wonderful. Uh, Fister is a good brand. Delta is a good brand. Kohler is a good brand. American Standard's a good brand. Moen is a good brand. There, there's so many good brands out there that, man, it's just it's hard to pick. Hard to pick out for everybody. And Trumpinator says, best power tool set to get for entry level. Man, my thing is don't do entry level. Start with, you know, Milwaukee, Rigid, DeWalt, what, what, whatever brand it is. Start with one that's going to last you the longest, and, and I think you'll like it. And NS Boots has passed my IPC, the International Plumbing Code Masters, with gas. Fantastic. And Darren R., good to have you in the house. What's up, brother? Guys, I think that we are going to go ahead and call it a day right here. I know I don't normally do that or always do that, but I think that that's what we're going to do today. I am going to make that go away. What I want to tell you is, number one, look, 
I really do appreciate y'all being here. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed or ring the bell, please do so. And man, if you really enjoyed it, share it with somebody, tell them about it, and hopefully they enjoy it too. So anyway, guys, again, thank you very much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And we will see you next Monday, even though next Monday is going to be a little bit different because I will be coming to you live from San Antonio. So hopefully we'll see you soon. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.